word cancer actually dates back not hundreds, but potentially thousands of years. It dates back to Old Latin, to Old Greek. I think the Greek term I saw was karkinos. And what it refers to is crab-like structures that have the ability to just extend out their arms in many different directions. And that's what these tumors do, is they start as a central mass in one area, and then they just start creeping, start crawling, almost like a crab, but you can do it in many different directions with arms and legs extending out. I think the Greeks correctly recognized what they were seeing and what we now know as cancer. Pathology is the key component in patient care. The first step is establish the diagnosis. That's based on pathology examination of the needle core biopsy. Based on those information, the clinical oncologists, they make their decision to treat the patient also. And then after that, the patient may come back, either receive chemotherapy or maybe go to surgery. So we evaluate additional specimens after the surgery. Pathology is part of a really long history, at least uh, several hundred years, I, I believe. We start from the gross examination of the patient's body, where the patient died for something, and we had to do the autopsy to see where the disease is from, and then we understand the disease better, and gradually, gradually, we move to from only gross examination to microscopic examination. Now we have our special studies like immunostains. It's a big teamwork. It's multiple people involved, multiple steps. Pathologist is kind of a team leader in this team, but we have the pathologist assistant. Pathologist assistant to the growth examination where we have a growing area and describe what the specimen look like, how big it is, what kind of specimen. And after that, they can cut the specimen. They examine the cut surface to see anything inside the tissue. We see a large volume of breast cancer here. I do all different types of tumors, but we see a lot of breast. It's so important for me to help stage these patients. I'm basically on the front line of the staging process. It's important to me too because we're seeing younger and younger patients that are getting these tumors and it's so important to help with the staging so they get the correct treatment. I hate cancer with a passion, but it can be one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. You can get tumors that look like flowers, that have petals. You can have cancers that are super ugly and just have those tentacles that extend out. It really does come in all different shapes and sizes. There have been tremendous improvements at every single level, ranging from pathology techniques to uh, make the diagnosis, to evaluate the type of cell the patient has, to the imaging that allows us to do a proper biopsy, all the way to the basic fundamental genomic analysis of every tumor, which is something that we were not able to do 30 years ago. Now we know more about the gene mutations, molecular levels. Now we classify disease based on the gene change, or the molecular change, so kind of like revolutionary change in medicine. So genetics is really the study of the basic fundamental determinants of life. What types of hair color we have, what types of diseases we may be predisposed to having. Any of the unique characteristics of each individual are determined by our genes new technology has started to allow us to change genes, to perhaps replace abnormal genes or modify genes. We've made such strides in understanding the genomic and genetic makeup of our cancers, but we're personalizing our treatments to the unique molecular subtype, so every woman with breast cancer does not have the same genomic makeup. We analyze cells, either from your blood or possibly from a saliva swab of a cheek. Those cells are then analyzed by extracting or taking out the DNA and analyzing it through a very sophisticated process of sequencing. 
which is basically analyzing the building blocks of the genes that we're looking at. So we know what they should look like, and if there's a change in the spelling, if you will, of that gene, that's called a variation or a mutation. If we can identify what that mutation is, and with the help of pharmacogenomics, design a smart drug that goes after that mutation and renders it, frankly, immobile, we, in essence, allow that cancer to die off. We are now able to see individuals who have either a personal or family history suggestive of a familiar or genetic risk and offer them genetic testing specifically for genes that have been identified to cause a markedly elevated risk of getting cancer. So Angelina Jolie is a spokesperson and a great example of how genetic testing for susceptibility to breast and ovarian cancer has become part of the mainstream. Finding that she's a carrier of a very high-risk gene for breast and ovarian cancer, explaining her family history, and then taking her own steps to uh, minimize her future risk of breast and ovarian cancer by doing preventative surgery.